Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Patrick Tian, LICSW, and thanks so much for coming back. In this video today, we're gonna to be getting into another role play, and this time we're gonna be doing it with a narcissistic parent who is struggling with covert narcissism. In the first video that I did, it was more of a overt narcissistic mother, and the overt narcissist tends to have a, a very inflated sense of ego. They're really up there. They think that they're the alpha and the omega, and they can get very pointedly nasty. The covert narcissist is, you know, hence the term covert, is a lot more tricky because usually if the person's been raised by a parent like this, um, you don't really have a frame of reference and usually a parent like this has spent your whole life trying to get you to feel bad for them. I find that the, the covert narcissist, their focus on image, which is narcissism is about image, their focus on image is about trying to elicit sympathy and empathy from people by portraying themselves as martyr and victims. If you think about the character Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh is a very dawn, downtrodden character. Um, I find that the covert narcissist can be a lot like that. They tend to be very icky, they tend to be very sticky, and you can really feel crestfallen for them because that's their whole gig. And in this scenario that I've come up with to try to portray this, this the covert narcissist is like, um, we're gonna be doing a covert narcissistic father and the players in the role play are um, the father and a son. And the son has a wife and an infant and the, the son is trying to get the father to commit to Thanksgiving plans, kind of topical. Um, and there's two other sort of entities within the role play, which is sort of the father's new relationship with someone named Betty. And the son also has a brother named Mike that also comes up in the role play. While you're watching, I want you to focus on two ideas the father's responsibility as a father and now a grandfather. And I also want you to be thinking about how does the covert narcissist focus on image? Um, and specifically with Betty. And you'll see, you'll see what I mean. Uh, so we'll run the three um, role plays just as I did in a prior video with the role play with the covert narcissistic father and the difficulty as that plays out. The second role play, we're going to be doing the same scenario with the healthy father. And then the third scenario is going to be the same scenario from the first, but the son is going to be way more boundaried and empowered. So we'll roll it. And then afterwards in a separate video, I'm probably going to do a clinical analysis of the covert narcissistic father. And uh, I hope you resonate with it. So here goes. Hey Dad, I'm just checking in about Thanksgiving. I, I didn't hear back from you and it's been a little while now. Yeah, I know. We've been really busy with looking for a nicer condo for Betty. This place just doesn't suit her anymore. Oh, I see. Well, we just need to plan and I need to know if you're coming since this year we'll be at Mom's for Christmas like we said and we'll be with you for Thanksgiving. And Dad, you still haven't met Nicholas and he's four months old now. Well, you got the gift card I sent for him, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. We got that last week. Good. Well, you could have sent us a thank you, you know, but I guess you're busy too and all. Yeah, yeah Dad, sorry I didn't. You know, about Thanksgiving, Dad. Um, we'll see. Well, things have been really tough for Betty with her work problems, and I'm all bogged down supporting her in that. You wouldn't believe how hard she works for those people, and she gets such flack from them. People give her such a hard time with all these demands. It's crazy and it never ends. By the way, have you heard from Mike? I got this call from him last month screaming bloody murder at me about his cell phone. Yeah, I did, Dad. I think you changed the plan and he couldn't get access to the billing people. That's not my problem. He's got way more spare time than I do to take care of these things. And you know what? He's not patient like I am. I keep telling him that and guess what? He just hung up on me. Just another person lined up to giving me problems. Well, Dad, they cut his service because you're the main person on the plan and, well, just forget it. Mom put him on her plan, so, but Dad, um, Mike is coming to Thanksgiving and he didn't have the airfare because it's expensive right now and he's still in school, so I just went ahead and bought him the ticket. Do you think you can help me out with that? Absolutely not. Betty and I are on a strict budget because of the condo. He's your brother, and I'm, I'm doing my best here with all these bills and getting people gift cards and things. 
You know, there's always something in life. Besides, why doesn't he go ask you or ask your mother's new guy for some help? He seems to be doing pretty well for himself, right? Uh, Dad, that's not really his responsibility. I know. I know. Well, we all have our cross to bear, I guess. But you know as well as I do, but it'd be a much different story if your mother hadn't divorced me right before my business was about to take off. Dad, that was 15 years ago and that business wasn't... You know, Dad, have you guys even talked about coming? <sighs> Kiddo, you know, I don't have it easy like your mother and her family does. Nothing comes easy for me, and guess what? It's getting worse. Whatever you do with your life, make sure you don't end up like me, having to make everybody happy. Because the world just continues to break your heart and demand more and more of you. The world gave up on me when, you're when your mother divorced me. And you're a father now, and I hope the world is kinder to you than it was for me. Because God help you if you make a mistake. I'm sorry, Dad. You know, and I'm sorry that things are stressful for you and Betty. You know, how about I just check in with you next week and see if you guys have thought about it. All right. Well, you're probably tired of hearing about the old man's problems, so I guess I'll catch you later. Hey, Dad, I'm just checking in about Thanksgiving. I haven't heard back from you for a little while. I'm so sorry. I called you when I was about to leave a voicemail, and then I got distracted. I'm definitely coming, and I'm booking my airfare today, and I'm going to come a day earlier if that's okay. I want to get more time with you and finally meet Nicholas. He's beautiful, and I love those FaceTime calls that we did with him. I dropped the ball. I'm sorry. Um, I've been distracted because things have been pretty rocky with Betty and I'm not sure about our future together. I could tell you more about it when I see you. Oh, well, I'm sorry things aren't working out with her. You know, it's really okay. One good thing about being single at my age, you know what works and what doesn't work. And hey, I was, I was thinking, I know I'm rusty. But if you guys maybe want to get a night out while I'm there to do a date night, I would love to be able to do that for you guys. Wow, we'd love that. We were just saying that we haven't been out together in months. Thank you. I bet. Yep. Hey, how was your mother doing? She's great. You know, when we'll see her at Christmas and we wanted Thanksgiving to be with you and Mike. And I got him his ticket, by the way, since the costs were going up and the date was getting closer. I'll reimburse you for that. And I also, I think I need to check in with your mom about Mike's cell phone plan. I think my plan is giving him problems, so I'll take care of that. You know, well, Dad, I can play for some of his ticket. We're doing okay, and, you know. No, no. Maybe get him something nice at Christmas, but I feel the big items like that are my responsibility, so... And you guys shouldn't have to do that kind of thing for each other yet. It's nice that you look out for him. You're a really good big brother to him. So how are you guys doing with the baby? You know, the firstborn is really a trial by fire. And are you guys doing okay? We're okay. But yeah, it definitely gets stressful sometimes. And we're both trying to make it all happen. But we're just so sleep deprived. Totally get it. And that's what it's like. It's like the first year is one long, exhausting day. Um, and, you know, you get caught up in making things happen that you forget to appreciate each other. You know, she'll need that from you and you'll need that from her. You're right. We're pretty zombied. But, yes, I'll remind myself to tell her that. Thank you. Well, excellent. You know, well, I'll email you my flight information. And you're busy with Nicholas. So uh, what I'll do is I'll Uber myself to you from the airport. No way. We'll, we'll pick you up so you can meet, meet Nicholas right there. Okay, I'd love that. Yeah. Right. Love you, love too. You. Love you, too. Hey, Dad. I'm checking in about Thanksgiving. I, I haven't heard back from you for quite a while now. Yeah, I know. We've been really busy with looking for a new condo for Betty. This place just doesn't suit her anymore. Well, I see. Well, we just need to make a plan, and I need to know if you're coming, since this year we see Mom at Christmas, and like we said, we'd see you at Thanksgiving. And Dad, you, you still haven't met Nicholas, and he's four months old now. Well, you got the gift card I sent, right? Yeah, Dad, we did. We got that last week. Good. Well, you could have sent us a thank you, but I guess we're all pretty busy, right? Actually, Dad, we are busy. 
we have a newborn, and you haven't been involved or present in any way for him. So I need you to think before you say something like that, and don't try to guilt trip me into thanking you for a gift card that's three months late. Jeez! Wow! Well, aren't we grateful? Fine. Well, while you're kicking me while I'm down, you need to know that things have been impossibly tough with Betty and her work problems, and I'm really bogged down supporting her in that. You wouldn't believe how hard she works for those people, and she gets such flack from them. It's crazy, and it's never ending. By the way, have you heard from Mike? I got this call from him last month, screaming bloody murder at me about his cell phone. Dad, I need us to focus on if you're coming to Thanksgiving or not. I'd like this call to confirm either nay or yay because I've been chasing you about this, which is a pattern between us that I would like to stop engaging in. What the hell do you mean chasing me? Your brother is screaming me on the phone while I'm trying to focus help with Betty and her work stuff. You got a lot of nerve, Dad. I'm not available to talk about your new relationship or take care of your feelings about Mike. If you can't calmly let me know about Thanksgiving, we should just end the conversation right now. What do you mean chasing me? Change your tone, Dad. I'm calm. I'm calm. What do you mean? I emailed you five weeks ago about your plan, and you responded a month later, only to talk about Betty's condo and her work problems. And you can't tell that I'm preoccupied from that intel. Look, I don't have it easy like your mother and her family does. And like I've always said, if she hadn't blown up our marriage right before my business was to take Dad, off. It's best that you don't come to Thanksgiving, since you continue to avoid telling me about your plans about it. I'm also setting a boundary with you. When we talk, you don't talk about the divorce with me, or Mom, or Mike, or about that business that failed. I don't know what you want from me. You're not listening and not giving me time. I was getting to Thanksgiving. You've now had weeks to tell me, and on this call, you're wasting my time by trying to get me to feel bad for you. I don't know what you want from me. I bet your wife would be shocked if she knew how you were treating me. I'm hanging up the phone, Dad. Goodbye. Uh, well, I hope that was thought provoking, and I, I I hope that it somehow resonated with you. Um, if you have comments or questions, you can feel free to put them in the comment section of the video. And while you were watching the first part and that third part is. What is difficult about growing up in childhood trauma and abuse where we have a parent like this is you might have been watching that first part and really felt a lot of it was normal. What I was, my main focus in, in this role play is trying to convey that this father is avoiding all responsibility of himself as a father and as a grandfather, and he's so focused on this new relationship. I find that that tends to be a marked thing about. I've even had clients, and even in my own family system, where the, the covert narcissist is sort of all up in a neighbor's business and so focused on that neighbor and totally neglectful of their own children or their own marriage. And why is just coming back to that word image that they are trying to, a father like this is trying to get this woman, Betty, to see him as a good boy. There's something really immature about the father's behavior and all that. And in short, um, it's, it's not normal, but it might be very, very familiar if you come from that sort of toxic, dysfunctional family system. So I hope the video was helpful, um, and stay tuned to another video after this. I'm gonna be doing a clinical analysis of that. And the piece about the, um, the third piece about the empowered son is that's not really an exercise in sort of, I, I didn't really do that role play to show you guys about how what's appropriate boundaries there because the son was kind of getting into it with the father. I'm just trying to convey more of sort of a natural, normal frustration when it comes to having a father like this and having boundaries and to also think about, is it worth it? Is it worth it to be trying to chase a parent like this to try to get them to be a better parent or try to get them to be a better grandparent? Um, this is going to sound bizarre, I'm sure, <laughs> but in my groups and an individual, um, sometimes I say that a healthy family system 
should be structured like the military. What I mean by that is that in the military, a general doesn't cross lines and go all the way down to a grunt to complain to the grunt about their life and what's going on with them. And what I'm trying to convey in that second role play is notice that the father um, doesn't overly share the business about the relationship. He takes responsibility for Mike's plane ticket, meaning that he asserts himself up here as being the responsible leader of a system. And what I find with either covert narcissism or overt narcissism is the boundaries are way off. And that father in the first role play was totally hunky-dory with the son paying for Mike's plane ticket. And that's sort of what I mean by that. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Stick around for another video about a clinical analysis um, of, the, of the, the covert narcissist. Uh, if you find this video helpful, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It's greatly helpful to support the channel in that way. It helps me provide this content. And I wish you all well. Take care.